Welcome to my version of uh, Knife Sharpening 101. This clip is directed towards the mums and dads, the brothers and the sisters, uh, and often you won't be interested in, in sharpening your knives. It doesn't interest you. And uh, all you want is enough to be able to cut your veggies and prepare dinner. It's also directed towards uh, people that are interested in entering the culinary world, so like uh, chefs or um, basic food preparation and stuff, home users that are trying to get a little bit out of their, a bit, little bit more out of their knives rather than just chopping veggies. I'll be suggesting the absolute minimum gear that you need to get uh, to get by with this, and then I'll also make some suggestions as to uh, how you can upgrade from that as well. I'll link, I'll put some uh, links below. Uh, regarding the whetstones that I'm using. Uh, it's not an endorsement, it's just what I'm using at the moment. Uh, with knife sharpening, the basic principles are the most, uh, the same for all knives. It's just a series of processes. And this video will get you started on things that you uh, uh, will need to do to get the most performance out of your knives. Um, and if you want more than that, Usually it's just a matter of refinement, such as you're not holding a consistent angle on the whetstone or you're not raising a burr. There are also uh, some knives, uh, the, the, the supermarket knives and the, and the ones that have been destroyed in uh, dishwashers, and they, they just will not hold an edge for long. And so at some stage you might have to spend a little bit of extra money to buy a decent knife. And um, you don't have to spend a fortune off with this straight away. You don't have to spend a fortune to get a, a really good kitchen knife. Uh, Tojiro and Kai make um, great what they call entry-level knives. And they are ideal for home cooks. And you can pick those up for about 126 Australian dollars, uh, even cheaper uh, secondhand. Um, some of the knives, um, like the Japanese Yanagi bar and Deva, uh, single bevel knives, and they are a much more complicated uh, knife to sharpen, and I'll cover that in a separate video. Well, let's kick off. So what you need to, uh, essentially all you need to do to sharpen a knife is to grind the edge on a whetstone to remove the chips and bumps and burrs uh, so that you get a nice clean edge uh, that goes in contact with your food. So what you'll need is a, uh, a whetstone or whetstones of suitable grip. Uh, maybe a, um, well you will need a leather strop or a an old leather belt. Uh, you'll, uh, you can even get away with a, a piece of newspaper if you don't have a belt. Uh, water and a space to work. Now you'll get to see uh, my own home set up later on in this video. And it's it's pretty basic. It's a you know it's a block of wood sitting on a sink, um, and you need about uh, a knife and about say half an hour to an hour to, to do the job and clean up. So the first uh, thing we need to talk about is a little bit about knife geometry. Uh, if you've already watched a few videos on YouTube searching for answers on how to sharpen knives, you'll have heard about micro bevels, convex bezels, bevels, chisel edges, and so on. Uh, these references may have confused you and put you off knife sharpening or you just got bored and uh, that put you off knife sharpening and I'll admit it you know I enjoy knife sharpening because of its tactile uh, feel uh, but I also uh, recognize that it doesn't have the appeal as as the, um, the high wire act of the Cirque Soleil yeah, fairly quickly uh, most knives have a micro bevel and I'll illustrate that with this, this pathetic drawing. The, uh, the micro bevel is just this and it's a, a slightly steeper ang angle than the primary bevel that's coming down this way. What that does is actually give you a smaller surface to sharpen and it gives the edge a little bit more durability. It's a little bit tougher than just going straight to a chisel point. I'm, uh, I'm very sorry, I just, uh, on reviewing and editing this video, I realised that that drawing is actually comes out backwards, and I apologise for that. 
You may have also um, uh, seen reference or heard of the reference on, on YouTube about flattening your stones. Um, there are a lot of knife sharpeners out there that believe that you need to have a dead flat whetstone for it to work properly. Uh, it doesn't really matter whether you believe it or not. Uh, at some point, your stone will start to dish. You're going to wear the stone out like you're wearing metal off the knife. This causes a, a dishing in, in the uh, whetstone and you've got to take it out. Every now and then you've got to flatten your stone. Now to flatten your stone, you can use uh, what is probably one of the most recommended methods is a Natoma uh, 140 grit or 440 grit. Uh, sorry, 400 grit uh, diamond stone. Uh, now they're about $130 uh, in Australia. Uh, probably a bit more now. Um, but you don't have to go to that expense. Uh, you can get away with flattening your stones on uh, concrete, like a, a, a concrete uh, wheel, wheelchair access ramp. Now they're beautiful and coarse. They're designed that way so that when it's raining and people are walking down these ramps, they don't fall over and bust their ass. It's great for sharp, uh, flattening your stones. Another great place is the gutter, or even just even outside on your on your footpath. Uh, you just rub that. Make sure it's wet because the the um, uh, stuff in the in the diamond stones is probably not great for your lungs. So if it's wet, you won't create a cloud of uh, this uh, whatever the hell it is they make these stones out of. Count of the times that I've been asked, you know, what's the best stone to sharpen knives with? And, um, you know, really, if you want to keep your prices to a minimum, your, your cost to a minimum, these um, grey, I call them uh, hardware store stones, and you can see I've actually used this one to um, reprofile knives. They've got a fine grit side and a coarse grit side. Uh, here's another one. Now these are dual sided stones and these come up all the time. Uh, this one I bought at a hardware store and it's so damn hard it's useless. Um, so I don't really recommend them. But you can buy them on uh, double sided stones on eBay and I think the uh, you can get two stones uh, and there'll be one will have uh, one side will have 400. And the other side will have 1,000 grit, and the other stone will have 3,000 grit on one side, and 8,000 grit on the other side. Um, they're about 25 bucks posted. They're not great, but if you really, if you're one of those people that just not interested in sharpening, and you just want to get that out of the road, then this may be just what you need. In my opinion, uh, you'll need. So 400 grit stone, a 1,000 grit stone, and 3,000 grit stones. Um, now you don't, it's not rocket science, and it's not that exact. You could swap out an 800 grit stone for a 1,000 uh, 1, grit stone for an 800 grit stone and so on. Uh, you may also be wondering what grit is. Um, now, a, say 110 grit stone uh, is like, sand that's been compressed together and is extremely coarse uh, where the 400 grit stone is, is is made out of a finer abrasive and the 1000 grit finer yet again all the way up to I think they make a they do make a 30,000 grit stone okay that's enough uh, theory for today let's get down to some sharpening this is my own setup um, It's just a block of wood with some uh, anti-slip tape on both sides so it doesn't move up and down my kitchen bench. Uh, there's a little ledge on the end just to stop it from popping over all the time. There's my Nano 400 grit. I love that stone. My Atoma uh, 400. Now I've also got a, a 140 for my coarser stones. As I said earlier, you do not need to have uh, a diamond stone. You can just walk out your back door and, and start uh, cleaning up your stone on the concrete. This is all you're doing when you're flattening your stone. 
it doesn't take too long, and if you do it frequently, it's not much of a chore at all. You're wanting an even distribution of all that um, the bubbles and a bit of stone residue. And of course you need your, your knife. Now this one's a pretty good nick. Um, some of the knives that I get in uh, on a regular basis are chipped, bent, and uh, they're in really poor condition and you've got to take a lot of metal off to get them back into good, uh, good condition. I just, I mean, yeah, I don't understand why people, you know, use knives like that when they could be working with their food rather than against it. Okay, so here's my number one. This is probably the most important tip I can give you. Um, you do not want to hold your knife by the handle when you're sharpening. You want to hold it up here. If you hold your knife down here, you'll put more weight naturally on the back of the knife. And what will happen is you will start to abrade the very back of your knife and you'll end up with a knife that looks like one of those circular uh, pizza cutters. You don't want a death grip, death grip on it. All you want to do is move your hand up here. And that way your pinky naturally curves around the blade and actually stops you from pushing down on the back. And that's, you don't want too much weight, you want it evenly distributed and that'll make your uh, chance of getting a nice sharp edge so much better. Now to begin with, we've got the, the grip and we're just laying the knife down on the, on the stone. And we're going to raise the spine a bit. Some knives, you'll actually feel the bevel and that's where it is. Uh, others are so rounded that you'll never feel it and you just have to guess it. Uh, but you want roughly enough to put, you know, say, two coins underneath. Um, you know, on a side note, people have asked me, what angle do I sharpen at? The truth is, I have no idea. I've never measured it, nor have I tried to, and I doubt if I ever will. It's, it's absolutely unnecessary. Um, now, the next thing is, you should put your fingers as close to the bevel as you dare. Uh, it's not dangerous because you're, you're moving away. Uh, however, I will point out, and yes, probably someone out there has already seen, that I wear sometimes have bandages on my fingers, and it's because these stones are quite coarse. I like to have my fingers right on the edge of the bevel, and these stones, if you're sharpening 15 knives a day, you will actually wear some of your finger off, and it takes days to heal, so I just put bandages on. Now we're slowly going to push forward, we're going to find that edge and we put our fingers where we want to sharpen and we're going to move along the blade. We're going to push to the end and when we get to the end we're just going to lift the weight off slightly and draw it back. Uh, we, we're lifting the weight off so that we don't dig the knife into the stone or change the angle and blunt it and do, undo what we're doing. Now you're going to do that about 20 times, so grip. And with, uh, you know, you, 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 You'll eventually work out the pressure and you'll eventually work out that it'll, it'll come naturally to you as you do more and more of this. Once you've done that side, you can either change hands, which is my preferred method, and do another 20. Now, if you don't feel like changing your hands, what you can do is do, say, 10 on this side, like that. And then we turn it around, and you're going to be pulling back. You're pulling the knife towards you. The 
The reason I like to change hands is that some of some knives, um, when you're doing this, you'll actually end up putting your handle on the uh, on the stone, and you could damage your handle. Um, some people won't worry about it. They're not worried about the looks of their knives. They're worried about how sharp it is, which is probably a good way to be. Once you've done that, you're just going to inspect that blade. What you're looking for is uh, signs of chips and uh, even abrasion. It's very hard to see on that. I'll, I'll take some uh, still photos and uh, include them. The, uh, what you're also looking for is, is what you call the burr. And this is where the, the blade, when the, when the apex finally meets, you'll get a burr for, forming and it's, uh, without, without raising a burr, you'll never have a sharp knife. And you want to feel for that. Now, you, you can drag your fingers or your thumb across the blade. Don't run it down it. Uh, you'll cut yourself to ribbons eventually. Um, if you just feel across it, you can feel the, uh, in fact, you can push up like that. And that's probably just as effective and pretty safe too. You're feeling for that burr. Now the burr feels like a, a piece of wire. And there'll be some, um, some photographs, some shots of, of burrs on the rock. Uh, in fact, in, on this particular stone. The lower the grit stone, uh, the more burr forming properties that it has and that's why it's essential to start on something like a 400 grit stone. One more tip, when you uh, think you've got a burr but you're, if, if you don't, if you're reluctant to put your finger on the, on the blade or near the edge, you can actually use a sponge and you can run the sponge over it and uh, you won't be able to tell here, but you can actually feel that there is a burr on this side and I can feel it. It's not all the way along the knife, so I have to keep working on it. But you can actually, you will feel, you know, it just, yeah, you'll know when you do it. Now sometimes, as you're sharpening, the burr will actually come off uh, while you're doing it and you'll see it and it'll appear like a little piece of wire or hair on, on the stone and you can feel it and you can hear it. It'll sound like you're uh, a train running over the gap in the tracks uh, or, or a bit of a slight rumbling sound. And so at that point, when that happens, you need to just clean your stone and keep going. You know, to remove the burr, you, know, you don't want to leave that on there, you want to refine it. So you can start on the stone, and all that is is uh, what they call stropping on the stone, and it's a very light touch forward and backward. Forward and backward, and that sometimes they will come off uh, while you're doing it. Now that you've created a burr, you actually need to remove it. Now you can strop on the stone. Or you could just rub over now. This is uh, a piece of leather. Now this is a belt I've glued to some wood. Now that's the inside, the rough side, and that's the shiny side of the belt. And all you're doing is just wobbling it backwards and forwards. You only need to do it once, and then you're going to just stop it a few times to get rid of any any loose pieces. The other way you can do it is actually push through the leather onto the onto the soft wood and you gently push through and strop again. Other people, and this is great particularly for the high grit stones, the newsprint. And you can actually strop on newsprint. My preference however is for the smooth side of this leather belt.
and that's how complicated burr removal gets. Now once you've uh, removed the burr, it's uh, an excellent uh, time to uh, do a paper cut test. Now this is espoused by uh, a lot of people sharpening knives out there. Dear. And um, there's plenty of videos out there of people whooping and hollering uh, because they managed to cut a piece of paper with their knife. And it's uh, proof positive that their knife is now scary sharp and testament to their superb uh, sharpening skills. Um, and it's not really that hard. Uh, even with a 400 grit stone, you can get a good indication about edge sharpness. And we're not talking about edge performance, but just an edge sharpness. Uh, and all you're going to do is run that through here. And what you're listening for is a variation in sound. What you can also look for here now are bits of paper that are caught on uh, either a piece of burr that just didn't come off. You're also, when you do this, you'll notice that there's a variation. Your knife will move faster and slower through areas and where it's moving slowly, uh, you need to work on just that particular part of the edge and you need to go back to the, the 400 grit stain in this case and just work that, that edge just a little bit more until you get a consistent sound and speed going through your paper. Once you've got that uh, consistent speed and a lower, the lower volume you can get, uh, it's all the better there. Remember the paper test is only a good indication of how sharp your knife, how good the edge is uh, and consistent it is. If you want to do a paper test that's uh, really significant, then uh, if you cut a freestanding cigarette paper, now that really is impressive because that does take an extremely sharp edge. Now once you've got that uh, cleaned up and uh, you're happy with the edge, it's now time to move up to the 1000 grit stone that you've got. This is my uh, Mora High uh, 1000 grit stone. I really do enjoy using it. It's got good hardness. It's got great feedback. I won't go into that. Just sharp, uh, flatten the stain a bit. Now, all this grey material, you don't need to remove it. It's, it's not a hindrance to sharpening. And once again, this whole process is, is no different to the the, uh, the uh, 400 grit stain. We're going to get a nice, loose, or should I say firm, gentle grip. We're going to start at the tip. We're going to find the, the bevel and do, as always, do 20, 20 strokes. Then we're just going to turn it over, or if you wish, just reverse your action. So, if you're going to do it with one hand. Feel for a bevel, it shouldn't be, uh, sorry, a feel for a burr, you should get, as you step up in your stones, you'll find that your, your burrs are still forming, but they're much smaller. thing we also want to do is we're now inspecting that micro bevel 
Now with the 400 grit stone, you will have you will be able to see the scratches caused by the stone. The 1,000 grit stone will still leave scratches. You'll need to go up to 3,000 grit before you you start seeing them disappear in any significant manner. But the scratches will be finer, and that's where you that's where you're um, yeah you, you, you're refining the edge. Now if you're one of these people that can't be bothered sharpening your knife or not really interested, this is probably a good point. You might as well just stop because um, that's going to be almost certainly sharp enough for your daily use. However, I would go on to 3000 grit stone because it will just give you a better edge that will last longer and for you that probably means less sharpening in the long run. Now that we've uh, gone to the 1000 stone, once again we're going to remove the burr. I'm just going to test that on the paper and you, you may be able to hear how it's a little bit quieter and cuts just a little bit smoother, more smoothly. And that's a that's a that's a pretty good edge. It needs a little bit of work in the top here, and maybe just a little bit on the bottom there. And as I said before, if you're really not into sharpening knives, this is probably fair. You know. This is so here we are with the the three thousand grit. Uh, stone which is the final stone for this particular uh, video clip um, I do recommend that you, you go to this grid because it just gives it a bit more uh, just refines the edge a little bit more and uh, gives the edge some polish uh, which probably assists in cutting so the same again exactly the same 20 on each side until you're happy with the edge You'll notice that this knife, or this, this stone, is much quieter than the previous stones. And as you go up in grit, they get even a little bit quieter. And if uh, by any chance a burr, a micro burr, or a little bit of um, metal comes off, you will feel it straight away on this stone because it's uh, so smooth. Uh, you'll see how the, the there's a lot of, uh, well, I guess it's metal building up on there already. It's quite a fast stone. This uh, this is a Nanowatt 3000, and um, it's great. It's not the only 3000 grit stone I've got, um, but for this particular knife and this particular metal, it's uh, it's pretty close to ideal. I can't feel a bevel, the edge is pretty, pretty good and I'm going to leave it there. I will um, strop it and test it and that'll probably be enough. I think uh, 3000 grit is, is where a lot of chefs, professional cooks, um, they probably stop here. And uh, for the home user, it's... Um, it really is good because it cuts down on the amount of stones that you need. It also means that you're not here for, you know, hours going through, and you know, the next grit. I'll cover that in another video. You know, got five thousand grit, six thousand grit, eight thousand grit, and so on. Um, for the home cook, three thousand grit is enough. Okay, so we finished on the three thousand grit stone. remove the burr and for my final stropping I actually have a, uh, a, a strop that's a, not that big but it's a piece just a piece of cow leather and I'll give that uh, 20 runs over And 
just test the edge one final time before we start cooking with it. And that's consistent in sound and there's no drag and you can see that that's a, a beautifully clean edge. There's no paper left on the on the knife. So that is ready to go. As I say, I'll be doing another video with higher grit stones and um, just a few more bits and pieces to get you a little bit, um, a little bit finer edge and uh, that'll be coming soon. Thank you for watching.